So let's start to look how we can create our punch card chart with a heat map built in. And this heat map is based on the radius and there will be more variations of this, so don't worry, but let's focus on this first. So let's start to look how we can create a punch card heat map structure or chart in ChartJS 4. So first of all, this is based on our punch card chart. That is another video, please watch that video first. So what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down here. We're just going to work on the background color because basically a heat map would indicate a intensity of color depending on certain values. This could be the size, but it could also be another item. For example, how much the project would cost. For now, I would just going to use the size and I will make another video for that where we have different variables uh, based on it. However, here we're just going to grab the size. Let's start to work on this. First of all, I'm going to scroll down here and just say here clip and let's make that uh, 100 pixels. Save, refresh, there you are. So now it works nice except for this, but that's all right. So now what I want to do here is in the border color, we're going to change this because this should be dynamic based on whatever the size is. So I need to create a callback functionality. So I'm going to say here CTX. I'm going to break that down and put it in here. So what we want to do now first is to understand what is CTX or what is in there. Let's do a console log for CTX, refresh. And then you can see, of course, right now it becomes black. Don't worry about that because we didn't define a color. So ChartJS gets a default color. So now what I want to do is I want to open up this here. You can see here we have the data index number six because I hovered over this specific item. You can see here the value is 25 for the custom, which is the radius. And you have here the six and the zero and everything looks all fine here. So what do we need here exactly? Well, I need to know this custom here, basically this value of R. That's what I eventually want to extract. So how do we extract this? But secondly, before we do that, I need to know what is the biggest one. So if it's the biggest one, like this 25, it should be dark. If it's the smallest one, it should be very light. So how do we do this? All right, let's build our structure here. First thing what I want to do here is I want to get the data set because that will become important. And if I open up the prototype where we have more objects, you can see here the data set and the data set index number. This is correct because this one is the red bubble that's index zero and this is index number one. So I'm going to grab this here. So we're going to say a CTX dot, uh, a data set index that will grab the item here. So that's the first one. So next, what I need to do here now is I need to loop through all of these items. So to do that, I'm going to create a constant and I'll call this our data array, where we get all the data points in array. We have to create our own array and extract the R value, which is the radius. So how do we do this? Now I'm going to say here, data array will be equals to a CTX chart dot data. And what we're really doing here is just going to the chart object from CTX because right now we're just in this background color. So I need to jump up to a chart object basically here and then we can go into the data here and then we have access to this. That's basically the logic we're doing here. So I say here uh, data dot data sets which index number zero or depending on the color or depending on the data set. So I'm going to grab this one here. So if it's dynamic that will be important later on. So I'm going to put that in there and then we're going to say a dot data dot map. So I'm going to use the map method here because I want to create an array where we loop through all these items. So what I'm going to grab here, I will say here, this will be the shorthand of data point comma index. And then we have here a function arrow expression. And all I want to do here is I want to return what exactly the data point, but then the R of it. So if I do a console log, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. If I have here the data point, which basically indicate this, what, whichever we are in. If I save that refresh, you can see here if I, all right, once I hover over or do something, you can see it works. It grabs us the values, but this gives us all the values. I don't want that. So I say here dot R, just to get the R values. And you can see we have multiple times of 10, that is correct, three times the 10 here, and I have 25. All right, so now we have this here. So we have this, all I want to do now is say return. Just give me this value, whatever you have in your database or not in the database, whatever you have in the loop. So what I'm going to do now is the following. 
If we do console log of our data array, we should have now an array with all the R values there you are. So now we have this. All I want to do now is get the maximum value. So what we can do here is quite simple and very straightforward. You're going to say here constant max value or max equals math.max getting the maximum value but we need to say this is an array so we're going to use the rest operator data array indicate that this is an array value create an array value out of it and not a string value and then get the highest value out of it so if i do here console log max save refresh we get here 25 all right so now we have this and what i want to do next and it's eventually is the color so all we want to do here is i want to say return a value and what we're going to return is basically this value here if i just do now return like this save refresh it becomes solid red but of course what i want to do is i want to make this dynamic so i need to play around with the alpha value so what i'm going to say here is the constant alpha equals and then we're going to say here one divide by max and why one because one equals 100 percent so basically i'm going to divide this by what is the highest value here and then multiply this by uh, basically the data array and i'm going to say here whatever the index number is and how do we get that index number i haven't shown you that but let me show you go here data set index or index here so it's one or the other it doesn't matter they're identical because that's zero if i go here it should be value of six you can see your data index six so i'm going to grab this data index whatever the data index is so save this then i'm going to say here i'm going to make this a variable so what i'm going to use here is uh concatenation uh, or template literals so say backtick backtick dollar sign put in here the variable of alpha save this refresh and all right oh, data index is not defined of course my bad what's going on here i need to put in the ctx very similar to this that and i think this piece of code can be removed save that let's remove this as well just to clean up here our code save refresh there you are so we get here the highest value and then the lowest value is different so uh, just to make sure there is a real difference, I want to give this some different values here, 33, and let's say here uh, 20. So if I save this, refresh, now we get all kind of different colors and intensities. Beautiful. Let's apply this now at the bottom here as well. So how do we do this? Well, basically we can just copy now because we just prepared everything, making it dynamic. So we can do that here now. We're going to put that in here. For the background color and then we're going to say here the value will be zero 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 identical here except for the alpha save this refresh and there we are now we have again dynamic alpha values here absolutely phenomenal